Welcome to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. This is episode 28 filmed at Cranbourne Music in Lynbrook, located just outside of Melbourne, Australia. Not too long ago, Cranbourne Music actually moved from Cranbourne to Lynbrook, so if you're new to this store, it may be a little bit confusing if you're just basing it on the name itself, but this is one of those shops I've spent probably more money in over the years than just about anywhere else. Between this shop, or their old shop I should say, and the city shop, I think I've bought about 15 amps from these guys over the years. When I first started posting videos on YouTube of the Behringer pedals, I actually purchased them from Cranbourne Music back in the day. This new shop looks so much better than their old store. Their old shop was fine, but this just really looks great. It's a standout in terms of visuals. And not only visually, they also have a whole lot of great gear, which you're about to see. Cranberry Music also have their very own YouTube channel, so I'll post a link up in the cards and you can check that out if you so choose. A huge thanks to the guys from Cranberry Music for allowing me to do this shoot. You're definitely in for a treat. Some of the guitars that you'll see in this video haven't been seen in any others. It's great to see a shop still doing something a little bit different to everyone else. Let's go in and take a look. It's always a good sign when you walk into a shop and you see just great gear standing right in front of you. Let's go check it out. You've heard me rave about Dusenberg on a number of videos over the years, whether it be at Jerry's Lefty Guitars or just at some of the guitar exhibitions that I go to. These particular guitars look absolutely stunning. Check out the finish. This is part of the Stardust series, electric guitars, and what an absolute beautiful finish. If you haven't played one of these, definitely give them a go. It's probably got the best tremolo system on the planet. While Guitar Search Saturdays usually focuses mostly on electric guitars, this Rickenbacker bass looks beautiful. Check out how reflective the actual fretboard is. That's killer. Maybach guitars are actually exclusive to Cranberry Music, as you can see from the sign. For those who don't know anything about Maybach guitars, they're actually made in Europe. They're beautiful looking guitars, very reminiscent of both Fender and Gibson guitars, and I don't think they try to hide that. As you can see also from the body, they're slightly relicked, but not too over the top, so they look like either old instruments or ones that have actually been used without going too overboard. But the question is, how ugly is the headstock? It's actually pretty awesome. I like it. Those guitars hanging in the background are actually more Maybach guitars and we'll check out some of them as well. Let's do it. In terms of quality and attention to detail, these are easily on par with some of the Fender Custom Shop guitars. Just check them out, they look stunning and they're very, very reminiscent of those old style guitars where the finish just cracks. I think it looks great. Now, one of the things I should also point out is these guitars are about $2,000 cheaper, give or take, depending on the model of custom shop guitars from Fender. If they ever get a lefty in, I definitely want to check them out. I gotta say, this one here really caught my eye. I really want Dr. Rick to try this. This particular Maybach guitar is the Tallyman T54 Telecaster style electric, and it's heavily inspired by the Keith Richards Telecaster. I love the fact it's got the neck humbucker pickup in it and a standard single coil in the bridge, the best of both worlds. Hey, it's the Australian Olympic colors, green and gold. Well, kind of green and kind of gold. It's an interesting sort of color. Initially, when I saw this, I kind of thought it looked a little bit funny, but after actually looking at it in editing, it's kind of grown on me. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. This actual guitar is the Jazz Pulse 63, and the color's called Caddy Green Metallic Aged. It looks great up close. Let's have a look. Man, I am loving these finishes. I'm not a huge Relic fan, but these look great. This Maybach Les Paul style electric definitely caught my attention. This is the Lester Cherry Lane 58 aged, obviously based on a 58 Les Paul, one of the most popular and iconic guitars of all time. Check out the Relic job on this one as well. Maybach have absolutely nailed this played in look as opposed to just butchering the guitar. I can't wait to see how these sound.
Here's some of the other range of Duesenberg guitars at Cranberg Music, including this. Please remain calm. We have our first official Lefty sighting. <laughs> Welcome back to the Lefty Alarm. I know everybody out there loves it. What I personally love as well is going into a shop and seeing a quality left-handed guitar on the wall as opposed to just a bog-standard Squire Affinity Series guitar that you usually see in any other shop like Guitar Center. So well done, Cranberg Music. It's great to see some lefties on display, and this is a beautiful example of a quality instrument. I absolutely love Duesenberg guitars. I hope one day I actually pick up that exact Star Player TV. It's a beautiful instrument. About a year or so ago, Dr. Rick, myself, and Brian all went down to test out this. Well, they did. I'm a lefty, obviously. I can't play it. But this is the Duesenberg Joe Walsh Alliance in Gold Burst, and it was one of the nicest sounding guitars I've ever seen. And when you see it in person, it looks absolutely beautiful as well. At that particular point in time, I hadn't seen Dr. Rick play anything other than strats or tallies, mostly just Telecasters. So on, it looked really weird. He was just a little too concerned about how beautiful the guitar was and maybe damaging it at a gig. But tone-wise, wow, what a sound. Two of the best amplifiers I've played in recent times were both Supro amplifiers, the Rhythm Master, which was loaded with a 15-inch speaker, as well as the Royal Reverb loaded with two 12 speakers. But check out this basement. Wow. This Fender basement is definitely a vintage amplifier, and I'm pretty sure it's not actually for sale. There's a few items that are here just for display, and I think this is part of the owner's personal collection. We'll also see some guitars of his coming up in a moment. Before we check those out, let's check out some amps. Rick and I did a pretty hilarious video on the Fender Bass Breaker. If you haven't seen it, I'll post the link in the cards. Cranberg Music also have the full range of Roland Blues Cubes, including the head and box. This is something I don't see at a lot of shops. A lot of people tend to say that the Blues Cubes are overpriced, being that they're a solid state amplifier. I would agree to some extent, but that said, they do sound really good, especially these little combos. If I was to buy one, I'd definitely pick up something like The Artist, or maybe even the Blues Cube Hot, which is this one right here. For those who don't know about the Blues Cube Hot, they're essentially Roland's take on a Fender Blues Junior that's solid state, but also 30 watts RMS. These are extremely loud amplifiers. I actually had a chance to test out the Blues Cube versus the Fender Blues Junior 3 amplifiers, so not the most current version, and I have to give the nod to the Blues Cube in terms of output volume compared to the version 3. I have a feeling though the speaker that they've put in the version 4 will probably out loud even the Blues Cube. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like Laney has sort of gone under the radar the last sort of five years or so. I didn't hear too many people talking about Laney amps, whether it be their combos or their heads. You do see some of their more inexpensive guitars floating around at some jam nights here and there, but I don't often see too many professionals or at least gigging musicians using Laney. I actually owned a Laney VC30, which is kind of like Laney's take on a Vox AC30. I just found it a little bit bland, both on the clean channel and on their overdrive channel. It was good, but it wasn't great. That experience aside, they make a great little 15 watt combo with two 10 inch speakers, which pairs beautifully with either humbuckers or P90s. It was actually one of the best tones I'd heard in a live situation. But if you know a Laney amp that really stands out in your collection or in your experience, also let me know. You might laugh, but this is something I actually want to try. This is the Line 6 Power Cab 112. So it's essentially a powered speaker, and you can hook up either a Line 6 Helix, which I don't actually own, or a Kemper or something like that to it, and just get really great sounds. It's supposed to be the perfect match for something like that. 
I actually do own a Kemper profiling amplifier and I've only profiled the amps that I actually use and that's what you hear on my channel when I'm doing a guitar video for example. It'd be great to plonk that on top of one of these power cabs and actually test it against the amp right next to it to see how similar they are. I think that would make a really great video. This has to be one of the standout range of amplifiers at Cranbourg Music. If you're into Vox Amps, you'd love this shop. They have just about everything from the bog standard AC30 C2s and C1s and all that kind of stuff, all the way through to some limited edition amplifiers, which we'll check out right now. This is one of only a few ever made. It's a hand-wired AC15 and it's totally old school. If you like your hand-wired amps made in the UK, this is definitely the one for you, but just be sure to extend your credit card limit. These guitars that are framed are part of the owner's personal collection, and it's funny, nearly every time I go in here, maybe once every three months or so, there's some different guitars on the wall, so his collection must be pretty epic. Let's check out some more guitars. Here's an EVH guitar. I'd love to find out whether or not it can blues. Without question, the Squire range of guitars is definitely a really great option if you're getting into guitars or even if you're looking for something like a project guitar that you can mod and test different pickups in. They're always a really great choice, especially for their price. Hey, check this out. Lots of great guitars on this particular part of the wall. One of the standout guitars for me in 2018 was definitely this red Contemporary Series Telecaster from Squire. It's loaded with two humbucker pickups and it sounded super fat and it sounded kind of like a Les Paul in many ways actually. It had a much darker and thicker tone than I was expecting from a Fender style humbucker. So yeah, if you get a chance to check them out, do so. Loads of great lefties as well on the wall, which is always awesome. So props to Cranberry Music for actually thinking about us poor Southpaws. There's actually two guitars on this wall that I don't see a lot in other shops, and that would be the Yamaha Pacifica with the humbucker in the bridge, which is a really great guitar, probably one of the most underrated guitars of all time, and the EVH on the end with the single humbucker. I haven't had a chance to play one of those, I might see if I can maybe borrow that at some point and do a video. We'll see how we go.
This particular Fender Telecaster Deluxe definitely caught my eye. I think it was a combination of not only how beautiful the top is, the fact it was also loaded with humbuckers, and they had these really distinctive cream controls on them as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. Usually this probably wouldn't appeal to me so much, but man, what a beautiful guitar. Check out the headstock. This particular Tally Stratomacaster from Fender is part of their Parallel Universe series and they're definitely very unique. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Kramer Music have always found a really unique and interesting way to display special guitars. I really love these Fender cases. I'd love to get one just for home. I know that's kind of cheesy. I just, I think it would look great with my SX Stratocaster. <laughs> just kidding, folks. These two Les Paul style electrics are actually made from Greco. These are 1970s guitars and they're actually for sale. It's great to see Cranberry Music also doing some used gear. There's definitely a huge market for Japanese instruments in Australia and there's a reason why. They're great. Some of these Gretsch guitars almost look too nice to actually play. <laughs> Cranberry Music probably has one of the nicest standalone acoustic sections in any shop in recent memory here in Melbourne at least anyway. There are some dedicated acoustic shops in Melbourne that have a really great room but they don't sell electrics. So in terms of a shop that sells absolutely everything, this would definitely be one of the best rooms hands down. How great is that leather couch? I dig it. Cranberry Music also offers some of the best Taylor guitars I've seen in recent times as well, including some of their high-end stuff, which costs an absolute fortune, but man, they sound great. Taylor guitars are kind of hit and miss in the guitar community. Some people swear by them, and some people don't like them at all. And it's one of those conversations I actually had in the shop with a couple of the people that were there. Some people rave about them, some people don't like them. From the left-handed guitars that I've played over the years, which is only a few, one of the nicest sounding acoustics I've ever played was a Taylor GS Mini. If I ever find another one of those with a pickup system, I'll be pulling the trigger. I'll leave a poll up in the cards so you can let me know your thoughts about Taylor guitars. <laughs>
Cranberry Music also offer Cole Clark and Mayton acoustic electric guitars, which are some of our finest made instruments here in Australia. One of the things Cranberry Music get right as well is the fact that they cater towards just about every type of musician. Whether you play keyboards, whether you're into electronic music, whether you're into home recording or anything like that, they've got just about everything in here. This is one of those type of things that a lot of shops don't do here in Melbourne, Australia. There are of course a handful of shops that do cater recording equipment as well as keyboards and brass but Cranberry Music seem to carry a lot of the brands that you just want so if you're going in there looking for a piece of recording gear odds are you'll be able to find it I bought both of my last two sound cards from Cranberry Music just because they were there and they were in stock and it was nice and easy to do While I haven't heard this Fender Bluetooth speaker in person before, I think it would be a really cool thing to have at home just for streaming music. I absolutely love this. As a guitar player, I think anyone who loves Fender stuff will probably get a kick out of this, at least visually. But I'm yet to hear how they actually sound. There's also a pretty extensive drum section as well, so if you're looking for a new kit or cymbals or whatever, they've got it all. Due to the enormity of pedals in this particular shop, I'm just gonna show you a quick selection of all of them and I'm just gonna let it play, so I'll shut up for a moment and you can check out what they've got. It's a pretty amazing collection. One of the standout things about Cranberry Music when it comes to their effects pedals is their range of vintage gear. I could be wrong, but I don't think Cranberry Music did this quite some time ago. This is a more recent addition to the shop, and I think it's great. A lot of people do love the old effects. Some of them can cost a lot, but some of them are pretty reasonable, but you're getting something that's highly iconic as well. I've tested a lot of these before. So for those who are interested, I'll leave a link through to the playlist of testing out some of this vintage gear as well, so you can check that out if so choose. And that wraps up another Guitar Search Saturday. A huge thanks to the guys at Cranberry Music for allowing me to come through with my camera and show you a little bit about what they've got. They do have two shops. One's also in the city centre of Melbourne, Australia. And this is their Lynbrook store, which is their newest one. And I think this is probably the nicest shop or one of the nicest shops, at least in the area. It's really, really cool. They've got something for everybody. If you're into the vintage effects, they've got that covered. If you're into just new stuff, they've got that covered as well. And this selection of Vox amplifiers and just amplifiers in general, as well as their walls of guitar, they definitely got lots of really great stuff. So there's something here for everybody. 
A massive thanks to all my Patreon subscribers for supporting the show. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to jump on board there, I'll leave links through in the description below or at the end of this video, you'll be able to click on the end screen cards. If you do enjoy Guitar Search Saturday, please share it around with your friends. I put a lot of work into this series, not only with the traveling, but also with the editing. It's a huge job and I do have more on the way. This is the last episode that I filmed in Australia for this particular series and then we're off overseas on the next one. So they're sitting there waiting to be edited. I can't wait to get through some of those and show you a little bit about what I found while I was away. So thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. See you on the next one. See ya.